I attended your 23C demo theatre at Cloudworld, and you finished the talk with two database sessions, both locking the same row, but didn't explain how this was possible. And so, and I mean, this was done deliberately at Cloudwood. I sort of said, here we go, look at this, wow. You know, so, sort of, and people just like had this shock look on their face. And I said, and that's it, goodbye, just to leave them, you know, always leave your audience wanting more, I suppose. So let's talk about how it's, how it's done and what the 23C feature is that enables its ability to do so. So this is the demo at Cloudworld, just to bring people up to speed if you weren't fortunate enough to be there at Cloudworld, or if you opt out of my session, dear idea. Oh I've got a table here called T. It's in this schema, McDonough, which is uh, my surname followed by my initials, just a common uh, convention I use here. So it's in the schema. It's in this database, DB233, PDB1. There are no triggers on this table. So there's no magic here. There's no cheeky stuff going on. It literally is just a plain old table. It's not a view. It's not a synonym. There's no triggers on it. It's just, and it's in that schema, that database. It's got one row in it, primary key one, column equals 10. I update the value to add three to the value of column. Let's go over to session two. Same table called T. Now I wanna prove there's no magic going on here. I'm in the same schema. I'm in the same database. And we saw there's no sin, there's no triggers, there's no magic, there's no data vault, there's no virtual private database. Literally is the same row in the same table in the same schema in the same database. I'm gonna to try to do an update, col equals col plus one, but I never committed this one over here. So obviously that row is locked. This one's gonna get stuck, right? And it didn't. How is this even remotely possible? This seems to break the whole concept of database locking. Let's commit that and go back to session one. What's even weirder is notice this session now, even though it's in theory had this lock, has now seen session two's committed row. So yes, I, I locked this row, yet someone else has come along and changed it underneath me. Maybe that's going to corrupt my database. Is this going to go from 10 to 13 and I'm going to lose that update? Do we have a lost update issue? Well, I'll commit session one as well. And look at that. It all just worked like magic, even though at the same time they were locking the same row in the same schema, in the same table, in the same database. It seems impossible. So let's explore what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is why? Why would we build something like this? Why would you sort of throw on its head the concept of locking a row, it seems to be a step backwards rather than a step forwards. So let me present you a simple application with the following data model as beautifully rendered here in ASCII. I've got an orders and sitting above orders, we have customers and products. So customers place orders and each order belongs to a list of products. Let's build this application very quickly. Here's my customer table with a customer ID and some name. Also the total number of orders they've placed. Every time they place an order, we're gonna update this column and say, yes, the number of orders they placed goes up by one. Let's put some sample data in here. Customer one, that's me. Customer two, Susie. They're gonna be the two people that are gonna be competing for rows in this demo. Let's create our products table. It's got a product name. It's also going to have the total number of products sold over time. So every time I buy a microwave, then that, you know, that row there will be updated by one as well, depending on how many people buy. That way I'm getting useful summary information in real time from my application. The things this demo is going to let you buy are a phone, laptop, and TV. That's all I sell, just three things. And finally, we have our orders table, which is a child of both those tables. So we have an order ID, but really the key things here, we, we reference back to a customer, we reference back to a product, and we have this quantity column, the number of products they actually bought in this particular order. Here's a, a typical application. Here's how an application would work. I'm gonna order, this is order ID number 12. This would normally be a sequence, but I'm just hard coding it here. For customer one, bought five phones. So what does that mean my application has to do? Well, for customer one, the number of orders has gone up by one. And for customer and for the products table, the number of phones has gone up by five because I bought five phones. Here's another example. The next order is order 13. Customer one, that's me again. I bought three televisions. Why I need three televisions? No one knows. But once again, customer orders goes up by one. Products goes up by three for the product of TV. And we can see in my session, it's customer one. I've now done two orders and in those two orders, I have bought five phones and three televisions. This is Susie, Susie's customer number two. She jumps on, she orders a laptop. So customer two has ordered 10 laptops. Maybe she's padding out a school or a business. So her total number of orders goes up by one and for Susie and her total number of laptops goes up by 10 as well. No problems there. Now Susie wants to buy some televisions. She says order 22 for Susie. I want three televisions, please. 
my number of orders goes up by one for customer two, that's Susie. The number of products for TV goes up by three and what's happened, we're stuck. Why? Because over here, I'm also updating the television road. And this is a really common problem. We have information that wants to roll up to the summary level, you know, common, common rows in commonly accessed tables, and it absolutely kills your applications. They have this concurrency issue. And solving this is difficult because if I chose to lock this row before I updated it, then what I'm really saying is no one gets to buy a TV except for one person at a time. I solve the locking issue, but I've totally killed concurrency. You know, you get that error on your screen saying, I'm sorry, please wait for a few seconds and try again. The other option is to build you know, a lot of complexity, you know, defer these changes, put them in a queue somewhere, have a queue process that comes along, runs them in serial, etc. It's complicated to build. People have done it. They often see people doing things like on commit materialized views, materialized view logs to roll all this information up. It's really hard to build. And so what we did, we said, let's solve this for people. So I'll commit that and go over to session two and see session two finally managed to finish and commit session two is finally committed. So we're sort of at, back to a, a starting point now where we've actually successfully got our orders in, but we had all that concurrency issues. The solution is literally as simple as this. We notice on our customers table, we didn't have any locking issues because customers obviously only update their own rows. It was the products table that had this problem. So we had this new syntax in 23C, which says I'm allowed to have this column be reservable. Now what it really says is rather than locking data as we require it, you take a reservation. You sort of put your, your hand up saying, I would like people to know that I would like to lock this row at some stage in the future. Let's now repeat the demo. Here's our list of products so far. We've got five, 10, and six. I'm going to buy four more laptops. That's gonna take me from 10 to 14. I update the laptop row. Let's go over to session two and notice the change. This session also is buying laptops, this time five laptops. Update the, app, update the thing, and it worked as well. They've both managed to update the laptop row. So let's continue on. They commit, and you can see the laptops went from 10 up to 15, and then when we come over here, they commit and the laptops went from 15 up to 19. So it all seemed to work. You can see now the motivation for the facility. It's not just you know to mess with locking, it's actually to solve a very common and real world problem that absolutely destroys concurrency. The question is, how do we do it? Do we have really have multiple locks on the same row? And the answer is no. If I go look in the data dictionary, after I did that alter table products, modify the column to be reservable, you notice if we look at this table called products, there's now this interesting sort of table that's associated with it. The object ID for the products table is 75096, and the database created this table called Sys Reserve Journal 75096. And journal sort of suggests what's going on here. We've built all that complexity that you normally had to build yourself, which is if I know people are gonna be updating the same row at the same time, let's not do that. Let's put all the changes into a queue. And then when people commit, we will replay those changes in order in the queue to make sure that we're now serializing and going through all that process without locking issues. And that's basically what we've built here. It goes into this journal table. So what happens is if I describe this journal table, there's a number of columns in here, etc. But the easiest way of showing what's going on is let's build some new transactions. Here's a new order, order 30, which adds some eight phones. Here's order 31, which adds another seven phones. I haven't committed that. What's actually happened is we didn't update those values. We didn't even lock the rows. What we did was took those updates and in, made them into inserts into the journal table. We've said, yes, you have a, a an intent here that you want to add another eight values to the product for the phones. And then you want to add another seven values to the phone product as well. When you commit, we actually go through this journal table and we roll the changes through. So there we go. We went from, you know, was it five phones up to 20 phones? When I say multiple people locking the rows at the same time, what we're really doing is deferring the locks until commit time so we can roll them through in a uh, sensible order. It's not really concurrent locks. It is a deferral of locks to then replay them from a journal table or a queue to make sure we can apply some common sense to the ordering. Now be aware, and I didn't put it in the demo here, what that means is commits, 
do incur slightly more cost now because we're actually deferring uh, work until the commit phase. So that's something to take into account. You'd want to test for if you're doing this in a high transaction concurrency environment, which is what this is targeted at, by the way, because we want to avoid concurrency issues.